everyone and welcome back to Curtain Up, my monthly series where I catch you up on all of the theatre that I've been to in the last month. I'm going to kick it off with some stuff that happened at the end of January because I didn't mention it in January's Curtain Up for fear of things being cancelled. If you're following me on social media you'll already know that I went to New York at the end of January, I went for Broadway Con but also obviously to see a few shows here and there. So while out in New York I managed to see their production of Wicked because obviously I managed to get a ticket for Dear Evan Hansen, also Hello Dolly, Spongebob Squarepants, Waitress and Once on This Island. So it was a pretty packed trip and I've still not managed to get all the videos out. Basically I've kind of lost my editing motivation thanks to I think Vlogmas and you know just those January blues but I'm getting there. They will come out at some point. I have put up a video talking through how I managed to get all of the tickets for those shows because I managed to spend pretty much less than $100 for each ticket apart from Waitress which was 109 So if you want to know how I booked all those tickets there is a video on my channel already talking about that. It'll be linked in the description and also in the little cards up here. Also relating to all of the shows I've put up a whole video of all the stuff that I bought or picked up while at at the shows there will be another haul like New York related one coming out and that'll be a Broadway con one but for now you've got those Broadway videos and the New York vlog has the New York the wicked vlog has already gone up so yeah there'll be a playlist for all the videos and they'll obviously be linked in the description everything in this video will be linked in the description coming back to London the first show that I had booked in February was beginning at the ambassadors theatre I'd heard really good things about this it was on at the national theatre I believe in the Dorfman theatre I think that's the name for it I've not actually been into the Dorfman theatre it's one that I need to tick off the list but yeah I'd heard really good things about this show and I've also well previous to this visit I'd never been in the Ambassadors Theatre, I never saw Stomp there so I thought it'd be nice to see a play which obviously is one of my resolutions for this year, see more plays but also tick off a new theatre. Knowing that I'll have so many videos to put out at the moment I did film some bits while at beginning but I just don't think I have enough time to put a vlog together but I did really enjoy it actually. I saw it literally the day after I came back from New York. So I got back home the Wednesday morning and I saw the show Thursday afternoon. I knew that it didn't have an interval, but I forgot the running time. I didn't realize it was two hours. Considering I was obviously exhausted from coming back from an incredibly busy week, I managed to stay awake through all of it. So I think that is a real, good thing <laughs> to say about any show really if it kept me awake for two hours and it wasn't like a fast paced moving play but I really enjoyed it actually. It sounds a bit stupid when I've like described it to people but it is very much just like watching a real conversation. It's like a fly on the wall kind of style. It almost feels like you're intruding at points. It's basically about a woman hosting a housewarming party and one of the guys who she's sort of like acquainted with I think he's a friend of a friend and he sort of sticks around after the party because they both like fancy each other and yeah it's just a very real play of like a post party end of the night wind down conversation and getting to know each other but yeah I've really enjoyed it in its subtlety and realness by the way, I managed to get my ticket for beginning with the National Theatre entry pass um, scheme. I was going to say system, but that sounded a bit odd. Scheme, definitely a better word. So yeah, that was £7.50. The view was really good and I really liked the Ambassadors Theatre. It's very small and cosy, potentially a bit too small in terms of the foyer space. I only really, well, I was in the dress circle, so I, d I don't know what the stalls bar area is like, but... I mean, it's not a big theatre at all. I think it only, I think it seats 444 seats. And I remember thinking that was a really satisfying number of seats to have. So yeah, it was a lovely little theatre and I'm really glad to have finally ticked off the list. The second show that I saw in February was The Ferryman. Look at me go get into all the plays. The Ferryman's at the Gilgood Theatre and this was another new theatre for me. I, I was thinking like, surely, surely I must have visited the Gilgood. 
but apparently not. So I ticked that off the list as well. That is a gorgeous theatre. It was so nice to finally go in there. It's absolutely stunning. I think the only theatre now I've got to go to on Chelsea Avenue is the Lyric. So I'm gonna try and see Showstoppers next month because yeah i was very lucky in that i managed to get a ticket for the ferryman through work and it also turned out that olivia and charlotte some fellow blogger pals were there that night as well so i managed to watch the show with them and that was great obviously a lot of people have been raving about the ferryman i think it's been on i want to say a year maybe around that mark probably less than a year actually but yeah everyone's been raving about it and i was like well i should probably see it at some point and it was really good i had a long work day and then went to the show so it's i think three hours and 15 minutes with an interval and a pause so I was like, oh gosh, am I gonna stay awake through this? Because that's long, especially when you've worked 8.30 till 5.30. I think I had had like minimal sleep the night before as well. But yeah, I enjoyed it. I stayed awake, which was great. It felt like act two was quite a, like, is it a slow burner? Is that the right phrase to use? But obviously it, it kind of, it makes sense when you've seen the whole show because there's, there's a lot that needs to be set up in the first act and then it felt like everything happened in the like third act. I, again, I'm not gonna do a video on the ferryman, I don't think, because I think it's closing soon to transfer to Broadway and I honestly just don't think I have the words in me to like eloquently describe this show. So sorry if you were intrigued about my thoughts but i just don't think i can do it but i would recommend trying to get a ticket if if you can to see it before it leaves london because it was quite a gut puncher of a play the next show that i saw in february was at the other palace which is one of my favorite venues i love it there and it was actually in the studio space so i was there to see tori allen martin's the hardest one it's her own show I want to say a one woman show, but she did have Tim O'Hara there with her. He he helped the story, I would say. Like he helped her tell it and it was intense. I kind of knew that it was going to be intense because it's obviously Tori's own work and she, she had a lot to say and I knew that before like going in. And oh my goodness, it was, yeah, it was intense and I, didn't think that we had so much in common, but turns out we do. And so when obviously stuff is relatable in a show and you're there and you weren't expecting it to be as relatable, it's like, whoa. And I got emotional. Um, I don't often cry at theater nowadays. I don't know, maybe I've become a bit, I don't know, tough, but this got me. And by the end of it, I was like, oh, I just felt like it was kind of like the ferryman in terms of the gut punch, but more emotional rather than shocking. Um, I just felt a bit like weak after it. I mean, she's incredible. Like her, the way she, her storytelling, it blows me away. And she's a gorgeous singer as well. So she obviously did some songs of her own in the show. and uh, It was just beautifully done. And I'm so like proud of her because it was meant to just be like the one show so obviously i booked it straight away when i when it was announced and then because that one sold out they announced another one so i was like oh after watching the first one i was like oh my god how's she gonna do that all over again like whew. she's done the two shows now if there was another one coming up i'd urge you to go but do follow her on twitter follow her work because she is an incredible artist and absolutely deserves the uh, the support, she's got an EP out, so you can go and listen to her music. Her voice, oh my God, it slays me, it's incredible. So yeah, follow her on social media, she'll be linked below. I also bumped into my friend Emma that night, which was really lovely because yeah, it was the ferryman that week as well. And obviously I ended up going with Olivia and Charlotte essentially. And then yeah, to, to bump into Emma that night as well. It's just lovely bumping into friends at the theatre and then essentially going together. It was just really lovely. The next show in February was a little trip to a tiny show called Wicked. I went because Amy Fisher was on as Elphaba and Samantha Thomas was on as Glinda. And you know me, I'm a bit of a Wicked addict and I thought, new Elphaba, 
let's go. Uh, so I did. I booked my ticket on Today Tix because at this point, I think it was half term week. Yeah, it must have been half term week um, because extra matinees, everyone was ill. And yeah, just booked, uh, managed to get a third row ticket in the middle from Today Tix, which is great. Thank you to anyone who's used my Today Tix code recently. You helped fund that trip, thank you so much. Sadly, the view wasn't great. You'd think being in the middle of the third row of the stools would be fantastic, but the staggering of the seats was not great. So I literally had this guy's head right in front of me, but life goes on. So yeah, I put the trip from that and also my January trip all in one vlog. So you can just see all of my, well, you can hear all of my thoughts from those shows. Obviously I love being in the Apollo Victoria. I am wicked trash and I'm fine with it. So yeah, that was a quite spontaneous trip actually. I think I booked it literally a couple of hours before, if that. Yeah, it was a bit of, bit of a spontaneous one. <laughs> After that, I returned to the other palace. I spent a lot of time in Victoria this month and I'm fine with that. Yeah, I went back to the other palace to see Eugenius, a new musical, which, well, if you watch my videos, you've probably already heard this before, but I saw Eugenius's concert workshop back at the Palladium in like 2016. So I've known about the show for a few years. I've been following it, hoping that it would get to this stage, a full run in the theater. And now it has. So I went to see it and it was so fun. It was so good. I, you know, when you just need really ridiculous happy shows like really fun shows because it's the start of the year the weather's like still a bit eh, and you just need something outrageous and that is what eugenius is so had a great time went on my own had a great time now there's a fun little pattern here that happens <laughs> towards the end of february and i'm ridiculous but i went to bristol to see wicked <laughs> Why am I like this? <laughs> um, I went because it's been like a like half term this month for like a couple of weeks. Like some, some schools have the second week of February. Some schools have the third week of February. So yeah, they had an extra matinee for the tour on this week. So I knew that Charlie Bapti would be on as Glinda and I'm ridiculous. So I saw Wicked on Broadway in January and that, got me up to 15 Elphabas and 15 Glinders. Then obviously I saw Amy Fisher as Elphaba, so I was at 16 and 15. And I was like, I've got the chance to see a new Glinda. Let's do it. Also, not to say that like my habit is justified, but uh, the Hippodrome had reduced their single seats, like they'd repriced them to 22 pounds and 50 pence. So I was like, yeah, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that because when I was previously looking at the Bristol prices when they weren't like completely sold out pretty much, um, it was incredibly expensive. So when I was originally looking, tickets were like 60, 70 pounds. So to pay 22 pounds and 50 pence for the first row of the dress circle, I was like, yeah, let's, let's go. <laughs> it was a horrid leg room, like so, so painful. The view was amazing. The view was so good that the leg room was trash. Um, the Bristol Hippodrome is a gorgeous theater. So it was really nice to visit there. I've not been to the Bristol Hippodrome before. I don't think I've really gone to Bristol before. So yeah, it was a fun little day out. And obviously that vlog will come at some point, who knows. The next month, is gonna be a mess on my channel because like one day it's gonna be a London vlog, the next it's gonna be a Broadway vlog. I apologize, but I don't want to have stuff like out of date content. Like my Eugenius vlog just went up last weekend because otherwise the show will be closed. It's a bit hard to be organized right now when I've got too many videos to make. So sorry, but all the Broadway stuff will come. All the, all the stuff will appear when it appears. After seeing Wicked in Bristol, the next show that I saw was Eugenius again. So they did a super fan night, which is such a nice idea, I think. And I was invited along, which I'm very grateful for. Thank you, Raw PR, you're awesome. So yeah, that was really, really fun. Um, I knew that, well, I invited Sam to come with me and I knew that Olivia was gonna be there and ended up bumping into a few other people as well. A few of you guys came and said hello, which was really lovely. The show was awesome because 
obviously the atmosphere like the previous time I saw it was a Friday night so that was a pretty good atmosphere anyway but obviously with it being like super fan night the atmosphere was incredible like it was so so good and there was a pre-show Q&A and a post-show Q&A and they were giving stuff away. It was just a really exciting night. They had like stormtroopers in the foyer beforehand which scared the hell out of me, not gonna lie. They gave us these amazing posters which I actually forgot to show in the vlog so I will show you now. So yeah this is the poster. Sorry you can't see it incredibly well but Eugenius poster that they gave us. Um, so everyone got one of these when leaving, which I thought was really nice, especially for obviously like the super fans. There are some people that have seen it like 20 times and it's only, it had like a six week run or something, not even that. So I'm impressed more than anything. So yeah, that was a really fun night. If all goes to plan, this video will go up before Eugenius is closed. It closes on the 3rd of March. So if you can see it, please do. It's an incredibly fun show, highly recommend it. Hopefully, fingers crossed it will have a future beyond this I think it has to so keep your eyes out keep your eye out keep your eyes peeled what's the phrase I've lost my mind the last show that I saw in February was you know just this little show in Victoria um Hamilton have you heard of it I don't really think that many people know about it. So I'm just letting you know, I'm giving you guys a heads up. There's this show that's coming into town. That's in, it's been in town for a little while now. It's called Hamilton. I, you know, I'm just not sure if it'll catch on. I can't even joke about it. Yeah, I saw Hamilton again, basically. Well, a friend couldn't go. So she messaged me a couple of months ago saying, I can't go, would you like my ticket? It's 20 pounds and I was like, Yes. I was in the Grand Circle slips, so I'll obviously be talking about that. I'm probably gonna be cheeky and like have it as like the cheapest seat, even though I like to do the cheapest seat when it's cheapest seat with a clear view, but you know, it's Hamilton. I can't really be too picky about what seats you can you can actually buy at this point. So yeah, I went back to see Hamilton. We had a different Burr. We had the standby for Burr and I think the first cover for King George and a different bullet. Those were the main different people that I've obviously not seen. So yeah, I'm excited to tell you all about that in that video, which yes, that will definitely be out next month without a doubt. So yeah, went back to Hamilton. Which was quite exciting. And that is everything for February. It's been uh, a quiet month for theatre, for me anyway, but still very busy. I don't really know where the time has gone this month. I feel like January went so slowly for the most part until I went to New York. And then February has gone so quickly. But as I say, hopefully all the Broadway vlogs should hopefully be out in the next month. And obviously lots of London content to come. Um, I've already got a couple of shows booked for the start of March. Um, some fringe things and obviously the new Wicked vlog. And yeah, lots of exciting stuff as always hopefully as always i would love to know what you've been up to in theater land this month whether it be in london in new york regional fringe wherever you are i would like to know what you've been seeing and what you've thought of the shows that you've been seeing and if you've seen anything that i've been to see gosh that was a lot of see seeing and seen in one sentence if you've seen anything that I've seen, I'd love to know your thoughts. Let me know as well, because that's always nice. That's why I do this. So we can chat just generally about theatre. If you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And if you love theatre, especially, I chat a lot about theatre, so stick around. <laughs> I hope you're all doing really well and I will see you in my next video. Bye.